Now, when you look at this little guy, uh, as was mentioned, right? This looks like a washer. If you don't know what a washer looks like, uh, that's what it looks like, okay? Uh, it's like a, a, a flat sort of sheet of metal, and there's a, it's round, and there's a hole that's also round, punched through. Okay. Now, because this is not a cylinder, because this is not a cylinder, if I were to ask you to calculate this volume using two unit methods, what would you have done? As a two unit student, what would you have done? Okay, so you would have gone straight to here, right? You would do this with this big volume, I guess, with this guy, right? And then you'd say, oh, see this part in the middle? I can treat that as a second problem. I'll do this all over again. And then I'll do a, a difference in volumes, right? I'll do volume one, take away volume two, okay? But what I'm trying to dig down in and, and look at is say, well, I don't have to think of them as cylinders. I don't have to think of them as cylinders. I can just add up these guys, okay? Now, because this is an important shape, we give it a name. It's called an annulus. And because, <coughs> excuse me, because what you've got here is a slice of this whole volume, we originally call this working out a volume by slices, okay? That's actually the name of this technique. And you've been doing this for a long time, for months now, okay? So it's just putting a slightly different name on it. But the important thing is the slices you have are not just plainly cylindrical. These were always just to deal with the coordinate axis, right? If we understand this, we can lift this past, we can do other things, right? So because it's called an annulus and we're dealing with slices, they are also called annular, that's the adjective, slices. Different name, same thing. So, what is the volume of my slice? Well, I've got, I know how to work with the volumes of cylinders, and essentially this um, annular slice, this annulus, is still what you said before, it's the difference of two cylinders, okay? So let's work out what the volume of this thing is. Do the easy part first, okay? You've got this width here. Yes, you've got this width. Now, I am going to now depart, even though I, I, I said I want to use this H here, I'm going to stop using that now, because one of the problems with using H is that I don't know where this distance is. I can't specify where it is. Unlike here and here, you see these? These are both the height of the cylinder, but these are better, yeah? Do you agree? Because I can specify which height that way is going, okay? Uh, which way that height is going. Now, I, I can't use dx because I'm going to use that when I've got my integral and that's already taken the limits, right? So instead I'm going to introduce a new letter which is a lowercase delta. The capital delta is the triangle, of course, which you've seen lots of. So that's a lowercase delta. I'll draw a big one over here so you can see the way I'm doing it. It's kind of like an incomplete eight, if you like. So this is, I'm going to call this delta x. I obviously, the, the, the height of this annulus and then I need two other dimensions. What other dimensions do I need? What other dimensions of this object do I need to work out its volume? Yeah. Yeah, this Okay, so this thing has two radii, right? It has an outer one and an inner one. So if you've got your, your other color here that you've been drawing this through, let's extend our axis through the middle here, right? Like so. Okay, literally through the middle of our washer, yeah? Yes. <clears throat> and from the center, my diagram is not quite on the center, but you get the idea. I want to measure this distance, which I'm going to call the inner radius. And I also want to measure this distance, which I'm going to call the outer radius. You can name these whatever you like. You can call them y1, y2, or x1, x2 if you're going around a different axis. I like calling them big R and <coughs> excuse me, small r, because the label itself tells you what it is. Now, remembering that as we take different annular slices, these radii are going to change, right? So you remember I said over here, hey, R, it's a function, right? It's not a constant. What are my radii equal to in this case? The small one is one on X, and the big one is E two. Good. So the small one gets its height from this lower line, right? That's where that's one on X every single time for whatever value of X you like. And in the same way, You've got e to the x over here because the height, or rather the um, this outside radius, always gets its um, length from the height of this function. Okay. So now I can say I've got all the pieces I need. I'm going to say therefore the volume is, and again, 
rather than going straight to this, right, which actually disguises, it sort of veils over all of the sort of the machinery happening on me, I'm going to go for this line. But it's going to look different because I'm not adding cylinders anymore. I'm adding annular slices. I think it is annuli, but I've never heard that said. In fact, that sounded weird coming out of my mouth. So I'm going to say annular slices because that's what they are. I need a limit, right? Because this delta x, right, it needs to approach zero to actually be equal to the volume. Otherwise, I just have an approximation. So the limit as delta x approaches zero of this sum of annular slices, right? Um, I haven't given values to these sum. Again, I'm just going to call it a and b. From x equals a to x equals b is going to be pi, because it's still a, a roughly circular thing. But then the difference here is, well, yeah, here is where I'm going to bake in my difference. And annulus is the difference between two cylinders. So what am I going to put in here? OK, very good. I'm going to do one step before that, because that step is correct for this particular case. I'm just going to write r squared take away little r squared, because that's what these functions are from. And then I've got delta x over here. That's the height of my annulus. Not the height of a cylinder, it's the height of my annulus. Now here's the important thing I want to point out before we just go ahead and write the next line. Doing this, right? This is what I meant by swapping the engine, right? This is the engine that makes the whole volume work. It gives you the calculation. If I can change from a cylinder, a bunch of cylinders, to a bunch of annular slices, there's no reason why I can't change it to anything I like. You could put anything in there, right? So long as you can think of your volume, your chosen volume, as an infinite set of infinite, the sum of an infinite set of infinitely thin these things, they don't have to be cylinders, they don't have to be annular slices, they don't even have to all be the same shape. They can be squares, triangles, whatever you want, right? This is what I mean by we've gone a bit deeper, we've pulled the veil back, but that's going to allow us to extend and work out all kinds of weird other kinds of volumes. Right, let's just quickly evaluate this. All of this stuff now, now that I've accounted for it, I am going to convert it into an integral. Okay? It goes from A to B. I can put this pi up the front because it's a constant coefficient. doesn't affect the integration. And then in here, I'm actually going to put in what is my capital R squared? What is my lower case R squared? What have I got for the start? E to the 2x. E to the 2x. Minus um, 1 minus x squared. And having dealt with the limit, right, and said, okay, now I'm treating this thing, this thing has the limit baked into it, I'm done. Okay. Now, let's think about this. Where am I going to go to next? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, I want you to put, again, <laughs> you're probably running out of colours, right? But the first way we were thinking about this was as a difference of volumes, right? The difference of volumes. Okay? Work out volume one and then subtract volume two. But what I've done is I've tried to approach this a different way. I don't want to do any subtractions at all if I could avoid them. I want to add things up. Because then I can change the things that I add. So instead of taking a difference of volumes, right? Or I should say a difference of a set of cylinders. I'm taking the sum of these slices. And what I've done is I've baked the difference into the slice. Okay? It's a very, very subtle shift. Okay? But enormously powerful. 